this video is all about getting you familiarized with the college's lathes. Now this particular one is the Harrison M300. It is a 13 inch lathe. Now again, it's just for familiarity and we'll get into some more of the functionality of it once in, in future videos. So the first thing is, is we've identified the lathe. Now we're going to move around here to the side and figure out how to get power to this thing. So the way that we're going to get power to it is, is from this disconnect switch. Very simply, there is an on position. That's the on position. Also take note that there is a side cover here that is protected by a switch. And if this switch right here is in the vertical position, it won't run. It needs to be matching up with that symbol. Uh, so the slot should be in the horizontal position. So with that, you'll actually notice that right around here, this will begin to glow. Now it's a little hard to see with the, the lighting in here, but it is actually glowing at this point. The other thing as far as power that's very important to realize is, is that your e-stop is out. Now a very quick way to find out if it's in or out is push it in. Okay, so if it snaps into place, there's some arrows here kind of giving you an indication that you can turn it. You can do a very short uh, turn uh, clockwise and it will release. So as far as the parts of the lathe, that's how you get power to the, the, or the motor portion here. Uh, as far as the DRO, you will need to go around to the back side of the DRO once the power is on, find the on switch, and go ahead and flip it. Now, we're going to turn this back and let that take a few minutes to boot up while we talk about some other parts. Main part of the lathe here is your headstock. Your headstock consists of a whole bunch of gears inside of this case. There's a lot of adjustments out here. We'll get into more about how to set those speeds and feeds in subsequent videos. This here is a very important piece of equipment. It's safety equipment and it is the chuck guard. When it is in the down position, the lathe will run. When it is in the up position, it will not. It protects you from getting your fingers into areas here that you can't get them back out while it's running. This piece of metal right here is your chuck. It is mounted to your spindle. The chuck is very similar to a drill chuck in the sense that it is to hold something uh, in the center. So this is a chuck key, much like a drill chuck, but it does look a little different. It functions slightly different, but again, it's the same principle. That runs it in and out. We're going to go ahead and put that back down, move down a little bit, and we'll see here, these are the ways of the lathe. The ways are where the carriage rides. The carriage will go back and forth, or you can call it in and out. Either way, it represents the Z axis of the lathe. Now the cross slide, which is the next section up, this is your x-axis on the lathe. And it will go in and out across the spindle, not in line with the spindle. And the last part right here doesn't necessarily or isn't necessarily represented by an axis, but rather um, a linear direction is the cross slide. Now, or the compound, I'm sorry, the compound. This compound right here it can be set at multiple angles. Now if you'll notice here this graduated section and you see the little target mark, you can see that this is set up about 37 degrees. If you take a look at the lathe setup manual that we have in the shop, it will basically say that this is the best angle for general machining operations on a lathe. So that's where that should be set. All right, mounted right on top of that is your tool holder. And now this is an Allura style tool holder. You're gonna find that in every one of the lathes in this shop. So moving down the lathe a little bit farther, we're gonna go down the ways, and here is our tailstock. The tailstock is for varying operations. One is for drilling, uh, the other is for holding uh, the part, and there's another reason that we could use this, and you're gonna see it in subsequent videos where we're gonna line up the tool holder with that. So by using this handle here, it will make the spindle go in and out. And you can also notice that it is graduated as well. You see the one and the two, that is your inch section up here. This is millimeters. Now the levers that you see on this, this lever here is the locket from moving back and forth. We loosen that one up, you can move it back and forth. This lock right here is to stop this from turning. All right. Now we're going to keep sweeping around here. These are not necessarily part of the lathe, but they are integral to the lathe operation. 
Here's all your tools over here. Notice that they have corresponding shapes to the tool holder that we talked about a few minutes ago. We're going to pan back over. You have a contouring tool, you have a heavy turn tool, you have a, a, a slotting or grooving tool, and a threading tool. We'll talk about those again later. These are tools for adjustment. We're going to be working on that very shortly. Again, tools for cross slide adjustment and carriage lock. We have a drill chuck. The drill chuck would be mounted in the tailstock. Here's a dead center. That's a center that doesn't rotate, but just provides um, the center of the tool. This right here is a live center, chuck key for the chuck, and a few uh, other tools for making adjustments. File, and then more importantly, this is how you clean up. These are the tools here to number one, get rid of chips, and then also to mitigate chips when they become long. Okay, accessories for the lathe, tailstock, tool holder, compound, cross slide, carriage, on the ways, chuck, chuck guard, headstock, DRO, and then power 